This is video 60 in our series, Topics in um, uh, Electrical Circuit Analysis. Um, in this video, we're going to consider the same circuit as we did in um, uh, the previous video, number 59, but it's going to be a slightly more complicated version. Uh, what we have is, again, a relatively simple circuit here. And both of these switches are open, so while the switches are open, there will be a circuit going through here, or a current going through the circuit of this is 12, plus 8 is 20, plus 4 is 24, so 48 divided by 24, there's 2 amps of current flowing through here. Now at time t equals 0, we're going to close this switch, and then at a later time, say 1 tenth of a second later, we're going to close this switch. And the question will be, what is the current that flows through this conductor? So we'll have T greater than 0, say less than or equal to 1 tenth. Find I1, that's the current flow through this conductor, and find IL, that'll be our decay current. And then when T is greater than one tenth of a second, when both switches are closed, again we want to find what is I1 and the decay current. So let's imagine this time T equals zero, and this now is going to be closed. So when that switch is closed, the current coming from the battery will go through the 4 ohm resistor, through the conductor, and then just will go right back to the battery. So there is no more current supplying the coil that's over here. But immediately after we close this switch, say T equals 0 plus, there will be two amps of current going through here, through the coil. Then of course it's not going to stay like that. That two amps is going to collapse down to zero. Then when it does, we have a collapsing magnetic field. It induces a voltage of this polarity. And again, we've discussed this in more detail in the previous videos. But then there'll be a decay current that will flow across like this through this conductor, through these two resistors, and back to the coil. And in the previous video, we determined the equation for that. It was IL equals 2. That's the value of the current immediately after the switch is closed. Then it's E to the minus R over L multiplied by the time. So R is 20 divided by 1.2. That's 50 over 3. So for here, then we have that IL will equal 2 E to the minus 50 over 3. Get this in better focus. IL will equal 2, E to the minus 50 over 3, 20 divided by 1.2 is 50 over 3 times T, as we did in the previous video, 50 over 3 times T, where T takes on the values between 0 and 1 tenth of a second. Now, what about the current I1? that goes through this conductor. As we discussed in the previous video, the way to think of this problem is that the battery here is putting out a source current, and that's going to equal just 48 divided by 4, 12 amps. And that source current is going to consist of I1 plus I2. 
I L. This decay current. And I L has this value. So we have 12 amps equals I1 plus 2e to the minus 50 over 3 multiplied by the time. Where t takes on these values between 0 and less than or equal to 1 tenth of a second. Or I1 will equal 12 minus this. Now let's ask ourselves, what then would be the value of I1 when T equals one-tenth of a second? So T now equals one-tenth. That's the value we're going to put here. And you can imagine that T equals one-tenth of a second, and that's just an instant of time before this closes. So we'll have I1. Let's consider what this is. We have E to the minus 50 over 3. This is 1 tenth. So that's e to the minus 50 over 30 or 5 thirds. And we went to a table and looked this up and that's about close to point 0.190. So I1 equals 12 minus 2 times point 0.19. And this is when now when t equals one-tenth of a second. So that's going to be just an instantaneous moment before this switch closes. And I think that I1 equals, I think it's 11.62 amps. Now we want to consider, okay, we passed one-tenth of a second, so now this is closed. Now we want to ask ourselves again, what is I1 and what is the decay current? Okay, when t equaled one tenth of a second, I L then equaled right here we had two times this quantity where this quantity was point one nine. So when t equaled one tenth of a second, I L equaled two times this, or well, that's point three eight amps. So that means now, when this switch is closed, the decay current was point three eight amps. That's it. I didn't bother to write that in there. But it's not going to stay like that. Now the decay current is going to go through this current, this conductor, and back through this resistor and return to the coil. So it's going to go like this. And again, when this switch was thrown, this had a value of 0.38 amps, but it's not going to stay like that. It's going to decay. So let's write out the equation for this decay circuit. It's going to equal 0.38, its value initially, times E to the minus R divided by L. Remember our formula for the decay circuit. I L equals, in this case, 0.38 E to the minus R over L times T. So here, this is going to be 0.38 e to the minus 
r over l is 12 divided by 1.2 minus 10 multiplied by the time. That's going to be now the decay current when this switch is thrown. Okay, so now we're very close to solving our problem. Now, what is going to be the current going through this conductor after this switch is thrown? Well, it's going to be the same deal. Let's just make some room. This 12 amps consists of IL plus the decay current, which is now this, or I1 equals 12 minus the decay current. Now the decay current is this, 0.38 E to the minus 10, and here we would say T minus one-tenth. T now is greater than or equal to one-tenth. Because this switch was thrown here a tenth of a second after T equals zero for that one was thrown. So this then would be our final expression for I1. And of course the new decay current is 0.38 e to the minus 10, and this is going to be t minus 1 tenth. And that would be the proper expression for the decay current, not just t, but t minus 1 tenth, because at this point t is greater than 1 tenth of a second. So here then is the final expression for the current flowing through the conductor. I the uh, I1 current. Okay, that's all we have for this video. As you can see, it's a little bit more complicated than what we'd considered in video number 59, but really the principles that we apply are the same. We just had to go through a few more steps in order to try to solve this particular problem. So, oh, a reminder that the um, playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org.